Hi, and welcome to your 15th iOS programming tutorial. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to programmatically toggle the status bar in iOS 7. In case you don't understand what that means, I'm about to show you what we're going to create today. But what you'll find it's very useful for is your iOS 7 applications. I've previously done a tutorial on how to toggle the status bar and how to hide the status bar so it's not visible on your iOS application. However, in iOS 7, the code to do this is now changed, and in fact, most of it can now be done from the info.plist file. Because of this, a lot of you will have found that your applications that previously had hidden status bars now have visible status bars, and you probably want to know how to hide that status bar again, or vice versa, and show the status bar. Today, I'll just be showing you how to toggle the status bar, and you can select what you'd prefer. So the application we'll be creating will just be very basic and look something like this, with a button that when clicked toggles the status bar, either hiding or showing it. In case you don't know what it is, the status bar is this bar at the top of uh, iOS devices that shows Wi-Fi and cellular status as well as battery status and the time. And we'll be able to just toggle this. It involves very little code, in fact only one line to actually change the state of the status bar and then a few more lines to see whether it's already hidden as to whether we should hide it or show it when the button is clicked. There's a few ways we could do this and we could even have a switch here, but today I'm just going to show you how to do it with the button. So let's open up Xcode and get started. Open up Xcode and I'm using Xcode 5 because the code that I'll be showing you today is meant to be used on iOS 7. Uh, because I've already done one on how to do it in iOS 6. So I'm just going to create a single view application, however this will work with any application, and call it status bar toggle. I'm only going to use iPhone, but you can do a universal application or an iPad application if you would prefer. It would work exactly the same way. And again, with organization, company, bundle, and class prefix, you can customize all of that. Obviously, since we're using Xcode 5, we don't have the option whether or not to use Arc, include unit tests, and as to whether we should use storyboards. Those are all prerequisites. And then, uh, save and create your project. So, the first thing we need to do is, let's run our application first, and you just see what the status bar looks like currently. So, select the iPhone Retina uh, simulator and click Run. What you'll see is you'll just see a white screen with that status bar at the top. We're going to hide it at first, and then I'll show you how to toggle it once we've found out how to hide it. So, let's go ahead and hide the status bar. To do this, we actually don't even need to use any code. In our project summary, which you can get to by first selecting your project in the files area, and then select the general tab at the top, you'll see this screen, probably. If you don't, make sure the deployment target, the arrow next to it, is pointing downwards by clicking on it. You should then see this area here, and that's what you need to look at. In particular, the bottom where it says status bar style and a checkbox marked hide during application launch. In iOS 6, selecting hide during application launch would have been adequate enough to hide the status bar during uh, the whole of your view controllers and the whole of your application. Now that doesn't work, um, and so you've got to select hide during application launch, so begin by doing that. You can keep status bar style as default. And then you need to go into your info.plist by clicking on this info tab at the top of your, uh, at the top of the project summary. Click on the tab that says bundle name only once, don't double click. You'll see a plus and a minus circle appear next to it. You need to click on the plus. Be very careful not to click on the minuses. Sometimes it's very hard to reverse things like that, and you might not remember what was uh, the values were and the keys were originally. Once you click on plus, you'll see a drop-down menu will appear, and it'll uh, the drop-down menu will appear under the key column. And what you need to do is you need to find view controller based status bar um, appearance. It's down the very bottom, as this is laid out al alphabetically, and uh, V is the last letter. In this case, there aren't any below that. So put that in for the key, and you'll see now it's turned into a sort of text field. And don't edit that at all. Just press Enter. You'll see the values then automatically set to No, and if it's not, just double-click on it and change it to Yes, writing Y-E-S all in capitals. But No is what we actually want. 
You'll see it's a boolean, meaning true or false, or yes or no. And it's essentially saying, should the application automatically hide um, if, if you've got this here, the hide during application launch selected, should that also carry through to all the view controllers, or should it not carry through to all the view controllers? And we're just saying yes to that, pretty much. You'll see when I went to general and then back to info, it's now rearranged and view controller based status bar appearance is now closer to the bottom of the list in a row. Anyway, let's run the application now and you'll see that the status bar will no longer be visible. As you can see, it's worked well and now it's a full screen application and you can test this by trying to go into notification center. You'll see that you have to first scroll down and you see the arrow appear and then you drag down to get to notification center. So we've now hidden the status bar, and if that's all you wanted to learn how to do, you can now stop the video. That's all you have to do to hide the status bar. For those of you interested in now programmatically showing the status bar, or programmatically hiding the status bar, keep watching. We're going to go into our main dot storyboard and add a button. So, go into your storyboard, and then in the right hand panel, find in your objects inspector button, which is just titled button, and is a blue button. Double click and change the text to toggle. I can, I'm going to make my text slightly bigger so it's a bit more visible. But again, this is just customization and you don't have to. You could use a switch or a segment to control. I suggest watching until the end of the video before changing it over. And it's very easy to do if you've watched tutorial 5 where I cover switches, segment and controls and pretty much all of the UI elements. Then go into your um, identity inspector you'll be in. But go into your jewel editor or assistant editor by clicking on the tuxedo icon. You'll be taken to probably your view controller.m. If you're not, make sure that if it's selected to manual, click on where it says manual and then click on automatic. Then where it says view controller.m, select view controller.h. You should now have your storyboard up and your view controller.h up. Now what we're going to do is create an IB action for when our button's clicked. And that's just so we can detect when the button is clicked and then toggle the status bar. So right click or control click on your button and drag it into viewcontroller.h in between the at interface and at end lines. For connection make sure you select action not outlet. Then for the name I'll just call mine toggle and the type ID event touch up inside and arguments sender. Then click connect. Now we can go into our viewcontroller.m and I'm just going to go back into my single editor. Inside our toggle method we can start adding the code to toggle our status bar. I'm first going to create an integer or a number which will be will set to 0 if the status bar is hidden or 1 if it's not hidden. And what we'll do is we'll say if this, if this number equals 0 then we want to show the status bar because it's currently hidden or the other way around. So under the add implementation line above view to load type int and we'll call this hidden and then add a semicolon then in view did load under super view did load type hidden equals and we'll set it to zero because we'll make the status bar hidden at first now here's the code to hide or show the status bar it's the same as it was in iOS 6 and Xcode 4 type square bracket then new UI application shared application close the square brackets and then type status bar hidden and then type equals yes all that's saying is the application the status bar it is hidden it, the hidden value is yes yes it is hidden now inside toggle we're going to add an if statement to say if hidden equals zero then make hidden equal one and make the status bar hidden equal no so type if hidden equals zero uh, equals equals sorry zero because we're checking if it equals zero we're not saying make it equal to zero then what we want to do is let's just copy this line here and paste it inside statements but change status bar hidden to no <coughs> to no and then underneath that type hidden equals one then type else so if it doesn't equal zero then we want to let's paste that line again and make it no instead of yes for the status bar hidden and then we'll just make hidden equals zero again now let's run our application and see if it works I'll go through this code in just a moment if I click toggle now it stays on the status bar so why is it doing this well it's fairly simple we just need to change this bottom one to yes 
Now if I run it again, you'll see that it will toggle as I click on the button. The first time I click it, the start spot will appear, and then it will disappear, appear, disappear, and so on. And you will have also noticed that when I first run the application, it is hidden. If I wanted it to be showing at the very beginning, I will change in view to load hidden to equal 1 and status bar hidden to be no, because I do not want it to be hidden. Now if I run it, initially the status bar is visible, and then I can start clicking toggle to show and hide it. So let me quickly step you through the code. All we're saying is, if hidden equals 0, meaning that it is hidden, then unhide it, so set the hidden to no, and then we'll set hidden to 1, which means it's not hidden. If it doesn't equal zero, then we want that means that it um, is is currently visible or not hidden. So let's hide it and then set hidden back to zero. That's as simple as it is. And of course, if you don't want to toggle it, if you just wanted to say hide it or show it, you only need this UI application dot shared application uh, UI application shared application dot status bar hidden equals and then if you want it hidden, yes. If you don't want it hidden, then no. That's the only line that actually affects the status bar's behavior. The rest of this is just so we can get that toggling effect. So that when we click the button the first time it hides and then shows and then hides and then shows. So I hope you found this tutorial interesting and hopefully you can use this code to upgrade your iOS 6 apps to iOS 7 or just set your up your new iOS 7 apps to have a visible or invisible status bar. It's a really useful thing to be able to do as often you want full screen applications that as they do not require or the status bar does not add anything to them. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and if you've got any videos, comment on this video, message us directly through YouTube, like us on Facebook and visit our website 99centsupdevelopment.com and get in touch with us through that. There's also a lot more information on our website and Facebook page.